As wildfires in California increase in size and in frequency, there are new concerns about the potential link between wildfire smoke and dementia. The Alzheimer's Association just released the results of a study where researchers tracked the brain health of more than 1 million people, 60 or older, mm -hmm. in Southern California for 10 years. And joining us live now to discuss the results of that study is the interim executive director of the Alzheimer's Association of Northern California and Nevada chapter, Claire Day. Claire, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having us. We've known for some time now that the increase in exposure to hazardous air can really lead to things like heart disease, asthma, several other health issues, but now there are new findings that link dementia and wildfire smoke. How did you all come to this conclusion? Yeah, so this was a study uh, that was released just here. I am I'm actually in Philadelphia at the Alzheimer's Association International Conference where all of this science is being released. Uh, and it was reported for the first time today, they observed a 21% increase in the odds of dementia diagnosis for every increase of one microgram per meter, uh, which is the amount of particulate matter in a cubic meter of air. Uh, and this was uh, in a three-year average of wildfire exposure. And, and I think it just leads to one of the many stones that we're trying to unturn when it comes to really understanding our risks of developing Alzheimer's disease and dementia. It, you know, it's not just in a lab looking for treatment, but looking for all of these potential environmental or lifestyle risks as well that might be con contributing to, to, to the dementia rates. All right, um, I have a couple questions based on what you just said, right? Uh, the first one is, how exactly does that work? Why does the wildfire smoke affect the brain in that way that it could uh, increase your probability of dementia? What's happening up there? Sure, so one of the theories with this wildfire smoke is that because it's produced at higher temperatures um, and contains greater concentration of toxic chemicals, might be why it has this sort of, um, you know, more uh, more dangerous uh, impact. It also, on average, is smaller in diameter uh, than fine particulate matter from other sources. And so, what happens when we breathe that in? Right, anything that we breathe in goes to our lungs. It then gets into our bloodstream, and that's how it can have impact on other parts of our body, including the brain. All right. And real quickly, because I don't understand the units of measurement for particulates and, uh, you know, maybe you can put that in terms of exposure to is it one wildfire? Is it two wildfires? How many days where it starts to make a bit of an impact? Yeah, that's a really good question. I, I, I certainly wish that I had a, a an easy answer for that. I think that because this was an observational study, it's, it's not quite um, that easy to understand. But I think it's really about what do we do now, which is um, thinking about when you are exposed to this, uh, to the potential air pollution, making sure that you're putting a, an N95 mask on when it's an air quality uh, day that's above 100, um, thinking about whether or not you can stay inside when we have those days, uh, because I think that that's the part as they've looked over these million plus people of uh, of, of data, it, it, we don't really, I think there's more to really uncover here um, to really figure out what that exposure really looks like, whether it's sort of one time or whether it's a buildup over a, a number of years, it's not really clear. Uh, really important information, especially as we talk about the Park Fire now, the sixth largest wildfire yeah. in state history. I want to take a step back here now, Claire, if we can, because it's always such a great reminder when we have you all on. Uh, can you just remind our viewers of some of the basic signs and symptoms of Alzheimer's and dementia? Uh, when might it be time to go see a doctor? Yeah, I appreciate you asking that question. So I think one important thing to think about is the word change. So we talk a lot about memory loss. Uh, we talk about specifically short-term memory, right? That inability to remember to do those things of activity da of daily living that are causing a change that are, that's a change from where you were a few months ago, a few years ago, and they're having an impact on your activity da of daily living. So forgetting to take medication, forgetting you have an appointment, uh, things, uh, changes in perception, changes in visual and spatial relationships. Certainly some early signs include things like changes in mood and behavior. But I think it's that word change that people need to hold on to. As we're aging, we've all walked into a room and forgotten why we've walked in there. But 
but if you, you know, when, if you've always been good at doing crossword puzzles and now are struggling to do some of those things, that would be a change. And so really making sure that if you have some cause for concern and, and you can find a whole list of the 10 warning signs of Alzheimer's on ALZ.org, talk to your healthcare professional early because the earliest the point of intervention, if it is Alzheimer's or another type of dementia, the more options there are for you for treatment. And there's more things you can do to in improve your um, lifestyle that might actually help you along the way. A clear day with the Alzheimer's Association of Northern California. We really appreciate your time and your insight and perspective. Thanks for being here. Thank you very much.